Okay, we are going to be reviewing how to draw single covalent bonds using this worksheet. So let's go ahead and get started with the example. We have nitrogen triiodide. So we have one nitrogen atom and three iodine atoms. To draw the compound, we first need to think about which atom is going to be in the center. Um, up here on the worksheet, it tells us that carbon, nitrogen, and sulfur are usually going to be the central atoms. And also we see that there's only one nitrogen, so that also tells us that it's going to be in the middle. So first we put nitrogen in the middle of our drawing. And we look at our periodic table to figure out how many valence electrons are in a nitrogen atom. So to figure out valence electrons, we look at the group number of the element. So right here we see nitrogen is in group 5A. That means it has five valence electrons. So we'll go ahead and fill those in. One, two, three, four, five. So now we know we have three iodine atoms. We'll go ahead and draw those around the nitrogen atom. And now we need to fill in the number of valence electrons for each iodine atom. So to do that, we look at the group number on the periodic table. We see iodine right here, and that is a halogen. That's a group 7A. So iodine has seven valence electrons. So we'll fill those in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So notice that I drew the valence electrons in such a way that the area which is lacking a valence electron to be full is centered inside towards the central atom because that is where the covalent bond is going to occur. So a covalent bond is when atoms share electrons to form a bond. So the sharing of electrons is to satisfy the octet rule, which is when the outer orbital has complete eight valence electrons. So the ionic bonds that are going to take place, or I mean the covalent bonds that are going to take place in this compound is we're going to have sharing of electrons here between nitrogen and iodide. This sharing of electrons gives this atom, the iodine atom, eight total valence electrons. That is what's going to take place with each iodine atom. So we have a sharing of electrons here and a sharing of electrons here. So each time we share one pair of electrons, that is a single bond. And that's represented with a line. So our final answer would be a central nitrogen atom. We would have our single covalent bond, which is represented with a line, which bonds an iodine atom. And that is what's going to happen with three. And then we fill in the rest of the valence electrons. So the line counts as this electron and this electron. So iodine has remaining 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 valence electrons. So we would fill those in. And so for nitrogen, nitrogen has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, it's good, and we need to draw two valence electrons right here. So that is our model of nitrogen triiodide. Let's move on to carbon tetrabromide. We know that carbon, nitrogen, and sulfur are always our central atoms, so we'll go ahead and start with carbon in the middle. And carbon has four valence electrons due to its position on the periodic table. We see it's in group 4A. We know carbon has four valence electrons. We will write that as one, two, three, four. And 
our subscript here tells us that we have four bromine atoms, so we will draw those in around the carbon. And now we need to know how many valence electrons are in a bromine atom. So we look at our periodic table. Bromine is right here. It's a halogen. It's in group 7A, so it has seven valence electrons. So for each bromine, we're going to fill in seven valence electrons. And we're going to leave the odd va valence electron, the one that just has one on the inside, so it can bond. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now we're going to have a covalent bond between each of the bromines and the carbon to help create an octet for each of the atoms. So we're going to have the sharing of electrons right here between one of carbons and one of bromine's valence electrons. So with this covalent bond, bromine has one more electron, so it has eight. Its valence shell is full. Carbon has gained one, so now it has five. But that same bond is going to occur between each bromine and that carbon in this molecule. So we have four different single covalent bonds in this molecule. So now we'll check to make sure each atom has a full octet. So bromine has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This bromine has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This bromine has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This bromine has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we check the carbon. We see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we count the electrons shown in the covalent bond because a covalent bond is the sharing of electrons. So each time we circle the covalent bond, we will represent that with a line in our final answer. So carbon's in the middle. It's bonded to four bromine atoms. And now we need to show the remainder of valence electrons not included in the bond. So check back on this bromine. We have the bond and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. And that's going to be the same for each of our bromine atoms. And there is our model of carbon tetrabromide. Moving on to number two, we have dihydrogen monosulfide. So we need to figure out which element is our central atom. And we know that sulfur is going to usually be our central atom. So we'll go ahead and put sulfur in the middle with an S. And we'll put one hydrogen on each side of the sulfur atom. So we'll take a look at the periodic table to figure out how many valence electrons in a sulfur atom. Sulfur is right here. It's in group 6A, so it has six valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. And hydrogen, as we know from group 1A, has one valence electron. So we'll go ahead and put it on the inside so it can make a bond with sulfur. So the covalent bond is going to occur between each hydrogen and sulfur to create a full octet. So hydrogen will form a single covalent bond with sulfur there. And this hydrogen will also form the same single covalent bond here. So we check to see if each atom has a full octet. Hydrogen has one, two which we know hydrogen is the special case. It only fills its first orbital, and the first orbital only holds two, so this is full. Check this hydrogen. It has one, two, so it's satisfied. It has a full valence shell. And check sulfur. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons due to the covalent bonds, so it has a stable and full octet. So now we will translate our model here to our final answer. Put sulfur in the middle, 
to represent a covalent bond, we'll use a solid line. So we have sulfur as our central atom and two hydrogens covalently bonded to sulfur. And now we need to represent our valence electrons that are not involved in the covalent bond. So we check back to our Lewis dot model here and we see that sulfur has one, two, three, four valence electrons that are not involved in the covalent bond. So that is our model of dihydrogen monosulfide.